Welcome to a deep dive into the heart of neural networks. We're on a journey today exploring how these incredibly complex systems can handle memory. Specifically, long-term memory. And you're coming along for the ride. That's right. We've got this uh, fascinating research paper called... Uh, Titans. Learning to Memorize at Test Time. Yeah, and some insightful articles analyzing it to kind of guide us along the way. Exactly. What we're really aiming for today is understanding why this Titans model is such a big deal. Yeah. Especially how it's tackling... Oh, hey there. How can we help? External memory or compressed memory is a straightforward technique. So what's the special about Titans? That's a great question, and it gets to the heart of what makes Titans unique. Yeah, it's not just about tacking on some extra memory. Right. Many models use external memory or compression, but they often treat it as separate. Like an add-on rather than an integral part of the learning process. Exactly. What's special about Titans is it learns how to memorize while it's processing data. So it's like the memory isn't just a storage unit, it's an active learner. Yes, it's a meta in-context learner that develops strategies for remembering. That's really different than just compressing data or using external memory. Precisely. It adapts how it remembers based on the data itself. Okay, so it's not a static memory. It's dynamic and evolving. Exactly. This perspective helps us to think about how memory is structured. I think that really helps to clarify things. So thank you for asking that. You're very welcome. And now, as we were saying, it's not just about cramming data. Right, because it's not just about cramming in as much data as possible. Right. It's about, you know, making sense of it all, connecting the dots, remembering what's truly important. Yeah. Kind of like how our own brains work. Exactly. So where do we even begin with unpacking all of this? Well, let's start with the front landscape. You see traditional models like transformers. Okay. While they've been incredibly successful in many areas, they kind of hit a wall when it comes to those long sequences. They just can't handle it. Well, it's like trying to juggle too many balls at once. <laughs> okay. Eventually, something's got to drop. And I imagine that's even more challenging with language. Oh, absolutely. Where the meaning of a word can change depending on the context of an entire paragraph or even like a whole document. Exactly. And transformers with their quadratic complexity, okay. they just get bogged down by that sheer volume of information. Think of it like this. For every new piece of information, uh -huh. the model has to consider its relationship to every single previous piece. Oh, wow. It's a recipe for computational overload. So some clever folks came up with linear transformers yeah. to try and streamline things a little yeah. bit. But it seems like they often end up sacrificing accuracy for speed. Exactly. You're trading one for the other. Yeah. So it seems like we need a whole new way of thinking about memory in these models. Absolutely. And that's precisely where the Titans model comes in. Okay. This paper introduces a really unique perspective. It defines learning as a process of acquiring effective memory. Hmm. That's a pretty big shift from how we traditionally view neural networks. So it's almost like saying that these models aren't just processing data. Right. They're actually developing their own strategies for remembering and understanding it. Exactly. That's a pretty powerful concept. It is, and it connects back to some fascinating ideas from the history of machine learning. Okay. Early models like Hopfield Networks and LSTMs also explored different approaches to memory, uh -huh. each with its own strengths and limitations. So it's like the field is slowly realizing that a one-size-fits-all approach to memory just doesn't cut it. You got it. It seems like we need a more nuanced understanding of how memory works. Yeah. Both in machines and in ourselves. Exactly. And that's what makes the Chitons model so exciting. Oh. It takes inspiration from this idea that memory isn't a single monolithic entity. Okay. But rather a collection of systems working together. So it has different parts? Yeah, it has three core components. A core. Okay. A long-term memory module. Okay. And a persistent memory. So it's like a team effort. Exactly. Each component has a specific role to play. Exactly. But let's focus on the long-term memory module for a bit. Okay. What makes that so special? The long-term memory module is where the real magic happens. The paper calls it a meta in-context model. Hmm. Which essentially means it learns how to memorize on the fly. Okay. It's not just storing data. It's constantly adapting its strategies for remembering based on the information it encounters. That's pretty wild. So it's like it has its own internal learning process. Yeah. For figuring out how to best store and retrieve information. You got it. So what's the key to making that work? 
Well, one of the most fascinating aspects is something called a surprise metric. The surprise metric? Yeah, it's inspired by how our own brains tend to remember things that violate our expectations. You know, those unexpected events that really stick with us. Right, so if the model encounters something that goes against its predictions, yeah. it's more likely to pay attention. Exactly. And store that information in its long-term memory. Exactly. And the way they measure this surprise is through the gradient of the loss function. Okay. Which essentially tells the model how far off its predictions are. Okay. The bigger the surprise, the stronger the signal to remember. Wait, back up for a second. Can you explain that gradient of the loss function bit? Sure. In a way that even I can understand. Think of it like this. Imagine you're trying to hit a target with a dart. Okay. The loss function tells you how far your dart landed from the bullseye. The gradient is like a little arrow pointing you in the direction you need to adjust your aim. Okay. So the larger the gradient, the further off your prediction was, uh -huh. and the more surprising the information. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. So the model is constantly adjusting its aim based on how surprised it is. Exactly. By the incoming information. Right. But wouldn't that lead to it remembering absolutely everything? That's a great question. And it brings us to another really clever feature of this model. Okay. A forgetting mechanism. Right. It's like our own brains can't remember everything. Right. The Titans model has a limited memory capacity. So it needs a way to prioritize. Yeah. Right. And make room for the truly important stuff. Exactly. To do this, it uses weight decay. Okay. Which gradually reduces the importance of less surprising information over time, essentially allowing it to fade from memory. So it's constantly juggling what to remember and what to forget. Yeah. All based on this surprise factor. That's a pretty sophisticated approach to memory management. It is. And this forgetting mechanism actually ties in with some of the techniques used in modern RNNs. Oh, really? They also have to manage memory effectively to avoid getting overwhelmed by long sequences. Okay, so we've got this amazing long-term memory module that can learn, adapt, and even forget. Right. But how does it actually fit into the overall architecture of the Titans model? That's where it gets even more interesting. They've developed know. three distinct variations. Uh-huh each with its own unique way of integrating long-term memory into the model. Memory as context, okay. faded memory, okay. and memory as a layer. All right, lay it on me. What are the key differences between these three approaches? So let's start with memory as context, or MAC. It's like having a super-powered research assistant okay. that constantly provides background information. As the model processes new data, the MAC module pulls up relevant information uh -huh. from its long-term memory to help it understand the current context. So if it's reading a news article, for example, right. it might access memories of previous events or related topics Yeah. to make better sense of what's being said. Exactly. Now, Gated memory, or MAG, is a bit more like having two parallel thought processors. Okay. It combines short-term memory focused on the immediate information with long-term memory, providing a broader perspective. Okay, so it's like having one eye on the present and the other on the past. Yeah. Trying to understand how they fit together. That's a great analogy. Now, the last variant, memory as a layer, or MAL, integrates the long-term memory directly as a layer okay. within the neural network. Mm-hmm. While this seems pretty straightforward, it actually limits the model's flexibility. In what way? In using both short-term and long-term memory effectively. So it's like trying to cram all your memories into a single drawer. Right. Instead of having a well-organized filing system. Exactly. Now, you might be wondering how these different approaches actually perform in practice. And that's where things are really exciting. Okay. The researchers put Titans through a battery of tests. Uh-huh. Comparing it to some of the leading models in the field, and the results were remarkable. Don't leave me hanging, spill the tea. How much better did Titans perform? Well, across a wide range of tasks, from language modeling to DNA analysis, Titans consistently outperformed state-of-the-art models. Okay. Like transformers and linear RNNs. For example, in language modeling, they measured perplexible. Which essentially tells us how well a model predicts the next word in a sequence. So a lower perplexity score means the model is better at understanding the flow of language. Yes. And making accurate predictions. Exactly. And on standard benchmarks like Wikitext and Lambada, Titans achieved significantly lower perplexity scores than the other models, even when dealing with those long sequences that tend to trip up traditional models. Okay. So it's not just a little bit better, it's significantly outperforming the competition. Yeah. What about those more complex tasks that require actual reasoning and understanding? 
Not just pattern recognition? They tested that too. Oh, really? I, they used benchmarks like PIQA and Heliswag, which are designed to assess a model's common sense reasoning abilities. Uh -huh. And once again, Titans came out on top. Wow. Demonstrating a superior ability to grasp the nuances of human-like reasoning. All right, I'm convinced this Titans model is a real game changer. It is. But I'm especially curious about those needle in a haystack tasks you mentioned earlier. Right. Those sound like the ultimate test of long-term memory capacity. They are. Imagine giving the model a massive document and asking it to find a very specific piece of information buried within it. It's not just about remembering a lot of data. Uh -huh. It's about being able to pinpoint the exact information needed yeah. from a vast sea of text. So how did Titans handle that challenge? Well, they used a benchmark called Single NIH, okay. which is specifically designed to test this ability. And Titans, okay. particularly the memory as a context variant, uh -huh. consistently achieved the highest accuracy scores even when dealing with sequences of up to 16,000 tokens. Wow. So it's not just remembering, it's understanding and retrieving information in a way that's incredibly impressive. Yes. Even compared to those massive language models we hear so much about. Exactly. And to put it into perspective, they compared Titans to some of the leading models in the field that are specifically designed for handling long sequences like TTT, Mamba2, and DeltaNet. Okay. Titans outperformed them all consistently. So this isn't just a marginal improvement. No. It's a real leap forward in long-term memory capability. Absolutely. For neural networks. It makes me wonder... What kind of real-world applications could benefit from this kind of technology? Oh, the possibilities are truly endless. Imagine a medical AI that can instantly access and analyze a patient's entire medical history. Okay, yeah. Identifying subtle patterns and risk factors that might have been missed before. Or a financial AI that can track market trends over decades. Wow. Making predictions based on a much deeper understanding of historical data. It's like giving these AI systems a sense of history. Exactly. A context for understanding the world that goes beyond just the immediate data they're presented with. Exactly. And it goes beyond just analysis. This kind of long-term memory could be crucial for AI systems that need to learn and adapt over time, uh -huh. like robots navigating dynamic environments uh -huh. okay. or personal assistants that become more helpful the more they learn about our preferences. This is all incredibly exciting, but I have to admit I'm starting to feel a bit overwhelmed by all this information. Yeah, it is a lot to process. Like my own short-term memory is hitting its limit. Perhaps a brief mental breather is in order. Okay. Before we dive into the final and perhaps most intriguing test that the researchers conducted. Okay the BB Long Benchmark. Okay, I'm ready for the grand finale. What's so special about this Baby Long Benchmark? Okay, I'm ready to hear about this Baby Long Benchmark. What's so special about it? Well, this benchmark is all about testing a model's ability to reason across facts okay. that are scattered throughout extremely long documents. It's the kind of challenge we face. When we're trying to make sense of complex information from multiple sources, okay. like research papers or historical texts, so it's not just about remembering facts, right? but also about connecting the dots and understanding the relationships between those facts. Exactly. It's like solving a giant jigsaw puzzle. Yeah. Where the pieces are spread out over hundreds of pages. Exactly. And that's where traditional models often struggle. In what way? They might be able to memorize individual facts, but they have a hard time piecing them together into a coherent narrative uh -huh. or drawing meaningful conclusions from them. So how did Titans fare in this more complex, reasoning-based challenge? The results were truly remarkable. They tested Titans in two different settings. Okay. A few-shot setting, where they used a large pre-trained model. Great. Right. And a fine-tuning setting, where they specifically trained the model on this benchmark. And how did it stack up against the competition in these two settings? Well... In both settings, Titans outperformed all the baselines. Wow. Including some extremely large and powerful models like GPT-4. Really? This is especially impressive in the few-shot setting, where Titans was able to achieve this level of performance with significantly fewer parameters hmm. than the other models. So it's not a thing about brute force or raw computing power. Right. It's about having the right kind of memory. Yes. And the ability to use it effectively. Precisely. And the fine-tuning results were equally impressive. Okay. Even a small fine-tuned version of Titan's mech outperformed massive models like GPT-4 and Llama 3.1 7DB, which has over 70 billion parameters. That's incredible. It sounds like Titan's is punching way above its weight class. It is. 
So what do these results tell us about the potential of this model? These results strongly suggest that Titans, with its novel approach to neural long-term memory, has the potential to revolutionize a wide range of AI applications. Like what? It could lead to breakthroughs in areas like natural language understanding, reasoning, and even problem solving. I can already imagine the possibilities. An AI lawyer. Right. That can instantly analyze thousands of legal documents. Yeah. Or an AI historian that can synthesize information from centuries of historical records. It's mind-boggling. And beyond those specific applications, Titans also raises some profound questions about the nature of intelligence itself. Okay, now you're really getting me thinking. If a machine can learn to memorize and reason in a way that's similar to humans, yeah. does that mean it's approaching a form of artificial general intelligence? That's the million-dollar question, isn't it? And I don't think we have a definitive answer yet. Yeah. But the fact that we're even asking these questions is a testament to how far AI has come. It really makes you wonder, what are the boundaries of intelligence, yeah. both artificial and human? And as we continue to push those boundaries, right. what new discoveries and challenges await us? It's an exciting time to be exploring these questions. And the Titans model, with its ability to blur the lines between machine memory yeah. and human memory, is pushing us to rethink our assumptions about what AI can achieve. Well, I have to say this deep dive has been an incredible journey. It has. We've gone from the limitations of traditional models to this groundbreaking new approach to memory. Right and even touched on some profound philosophical questions along the way. It's been a pleasure exploring these ideas with you. Likewise. And I hope our listeners are leaving this deep dive with a sense of wonder and excitement. I bet they are. About the future of AI. And who knows, maybe the insights from this research into neural networks will inspire new ways yeah. to enhance our own memory and learning abilities. That's a fascinating thought. Perhaps the next frontier of human intelligence will be inspired by the very machines we're creating. Well, that's all the time we have for today's deep dive. Thanks for joining us on this incredible exploration into the world of Titans. Absolutely. And long-term memory and neural networks. We'll see you next time for another deep dive. Sounds great. Into the most fascinating corners of knowledge. Until then, keep those neural networks firing.